So, hello everybody, and thanks for being here. So many people here, that's, that's great. So, I'm Selin Gosanoto, and I am the lead developer of uh, SubOS. SubOS is a decentralized cloud computing system. So, we will see what, what it does and how it uses in the next 10 minutes. So, first, we'll install the SubOS package and well, configure the client to request instances that are in the cloud different types of instances. And then we will extend the, the cloud with this computer and request instances in this computer. So let's do it. So this is a live demo, so I hope it will work. So first, I need to uh, install the status package. Uh, so we use the OBS open system for this from SUS, so I just need to extend my source list with this command. Ah. Okay. And now I just have to sudo so after get install stuff as it now. And here is here it is. So in the meantime while it is installing, I will Go to stopwise.org, so this is our website. You can have your own stopwise.org. This is free software. Everything is free, everything is in online. So I will just log in and. Well, so I will log in using Google. And I will go into my uh, parameters, my account. So the network is very slow, so... Uh, and I just have to uh, ask for a token. And I will just copy and try to copy. <laughs> and how I have to now, so... Okay, so Slapwise Slapwise is, is installed, and I have now a new command named Slapwise. And all I have to do to configure it is uh, run the command Slapwise on your client with my token. So it will download uh, certificates from Slapwise support so that now I can request, okay, I can request instances from the command line. So we can do it from the new line, but we are developers, we are geeks, so we love the internal, right? So, slap OS. I will request an instance of, uh, of a blog, for example, of a WordPress blog. So, it will be post and blog, for example, and this is a WordPress instance. So, it is requesting. Okay, so it uh, shows me, so the instance is ready here and it shows me several parameters and I can see that one of the parameters is the URL and I can use it to connect to my instance of WordPress. We have network and we don't. Okay, so this is a WordPress, uh, a classical WordPress. So let's do now something a bit different. We will request the sound of uh, a virtual, um, virtual machine, the KVM virtual machine. So, Slapwise request. I will name it my KVM, and this is an instance of KVM. It's requesting, oh, real quick. So, earlier I can see the URL, what I can connect to, and I can connect to the, with the browser to my uh, virtual machine using this password. Okay, ask me the password, enter it, and okay. So this is a Debian installation. It can be anything else. By default, this is Debian. Now we will request now an instance of uh, database, uh, just a MySQL uh, password database. So, 
Let's make my stone again. Come on. Okay. So it's ready. And this time we connect directly to the IP. So this is an IPv6. I will directly connect using the yeah. PS build command. This is a host and user passwords and the secure password is insecure. Oh, nice. So we just have to be patient. So we created uh, several different uh, directories in the SAFTC for the configuration, and we can see on the bottom that it has been re registered as this computer ID. Uh, all I have to do to use it now is to say that I want this computer, on this computer, I want to install all that is necessary to run instances of Postgres. So this is the command supply, which, is, which we install on the library and so on. Uh, supply Postgres and this node. The installation again. So now I can request instances of uh, Postgres on this computer. So let's do it and try to access it this time. So, request. So, so Postgres, Postgres, zero, and this is an instance of Postgres clone. But this time I will say that I want this instance not to be on the cloud somewhere, but to be here. Is the way to specify it on this computer. So it will be requested and it will be getting open in a few minutes. So if we are lucky, we will see it in the end of the presentation. Do 
Yes. I, which is. Sorry? Yeah, no, well, this is a name I don't care. <laughs> okay, so very fast. So we'll see it in a few minutes. So this is the name of the instance, so I name it like I want, and I want it to be like this. So here we quickly seen how to request instances using the command line um, on Slackwise. We've seen many different types of instances, how to use them, how to connect to them, and then how to extend the cloud with my own machines. So maybe to create a private cloud, uh, so I can use for myself or for my friends or company or I don't know what the machine as a um, cloud. So now what if we want to add an user for that is not here in the list? Uh, so here we see how we will do it. Accessible inside to your users, and of course, you do the user management. 
And here's our new calendar, uh, which blends together personal and work group calendars, and you can export it to the iCal format. Now, Neona runs quite fine as it is. Why would you put such a software on the cloud and why these networks? We do it to facilitate testing. If you want to try it out, you should not need to install it on your, on your computer. Maybe the person who's interested is not a system admin, so downloading Perl modules or, or CPAN modules or just even installing operating system packages on a Linux is maybe not uh, what, what, what he enjoys to do. So it should be possible with just some clicks to get something to give it a spin. And if you have many small instances, then an internal cloud based on SlackOS can be very efficient because virtualization is optional and SlackOS is defined, uh, designed to allow for a maximum number uh, of instances on a single server. Uh, finally, SlackOS has many bold design, design decisions. They're using directly, internally only IPv6. They are newest versions of Perl and all other software components. So MioGa usually runs on Debian stable. And by having MioGa run on SlackOS today, uh, we anticipate the development of tomorrow's version. Now, how do you get a software? How do you get a software running on SlackOS? There are two distinct parts. There is the compilation and there is the instantiation. The compilation makes the software and all its components available on the node. Think of it like installing shared binaries in a common location, user bin or auto or something. It can be fast if everything pre is, has already been pre-compiled, so you can install a pre-compiled package. But uh, it can also be that if you compile everything from scratch, you remember, not only the software, but also all its subcomponents, that can take a little bit of time. But for Mioga, that would be Perl itself, Apache, more Perl, Postgres, and there are plenty of, of uh, Perl modules and their dependencies. In this way, all versions and patches of subcomponents are under our control and independent from the rest of the system. And then on the right side, we have uh, instantiation. An instance of the software gets created, uh, its process gets started, and its own data lives in a partition. Uh, a partition is a distinct place. Think of it like a dot application directory within your home directory. Uh, each partition has its own Unix user, its group, and IPv6 address, and that's how they are separated from each other. The instantiation step can get repeated in order to ensure that uh, the software works correctly. So that means instantiation must be fast in the order of some seconds. And it must be non-destructive, of course, all user data must be kept. Both compilation and instantiation use build-out. Build-out is a um, Python system that takes care of the life cycle of the software, downloading, patching, compiling, and deployment. There is reuse of code going on on several levels. First of all, you have blocks of Python code, uh, which are uh, called recipes. And then in a build-out profile, you have the left and right profile, uh, I call the recipes with parameters. Uh, so the profile is like a configuration file for the running build out. There is one top level profile for compilation, in the end it creates a MioGa software installation on the host, and there's an instantiation profile, when I run it once through build out, it creates a MioGa instance. So on the one hand, I want to reuse the recipes, on the other hand, I want to reuse components, because uh, each component of the system is specified by a profile. And of course, I want to use existing components, and now we have to write what is not yet there, or maybe I just have to change the version. Let me show you an example from the compilation, from the compilation profile. Here's the, the profile I wrote to get mod Perl for Apache. You see the recipe used there, it's called uh, recipe equals CMMI, CMMI stands for configure, make, make, install. Uh, then I just have to give it the URL for the source code and the MD5 uh, checksum, so we are to show it's the right source code, and parameters for the configure step. Why do we need parameters for the configure step? Well, I want to use the components and the paths from my other components and not from somewhere else in the system. Uh, so I have to give him, the, give him the information he needs to find his dependencies. If all goes fine, fine if I still have uh, network access, then I show you here the web runner. That's uh, a little tool that you can use to test and to run your profiles. So here you see the result, and i just show you quickly, it's just a file hierarchy. I'll show you that we have here, here within Apache 2.2. We find... Mopo. Now, 
Now for instantiation. If I click on give me a MioGam, that will actually use two, occupy two separate partitions. There is one, uh, there is one for Apache and one for Postgres. That way I can build upon all nice things that already exist for Postgres. If somebody adds cluster functionality, then I can just say that I want, would like to have that, and then uh, it works. The partition might be on the same node or not as I wish. Communication happens principally through IPv6, and just for the for the human user, there is a frontend for IPv4. <laughs> I'm not showing too many details because we are a bit pressed for time, but I show you the result is that I can see in this left runner what is what is running of my processes, and I see also the URL to connect to. That is uh, the same as what Cedric showed you, what he sees on the command line. Uh, if I use the step runner for testing, I see it here. Now the, the issues of the, the little the, the time where I bit spent a bit of time during my development was mostly related to the Perl modules. Many of them get built in very different ways, so you have to see how it's done, where you have to go, have to enter some configuration variables. Some have hard coded paths inside that must be I must extract into variables. And generally you can say that the state of IPv6 in Perl can be a bit complicated. In order to, slap, to use Slapo as a maximum efficiency, I, I, have, I want to carefully separate the compilation part from the transcends part. So now for any further information, I want to refer you to two websites where you get all the documentations and the code for both SlapOS and Vyoga. That's communityslapos.org and alexander.org. On communityslapos.org, you also have a forum where we will answer your questions. And of course, we will answer them now. And, uh, and we will answer them now. Runs on my Android phone, so my Android phone is a SlapOS server. So this way, the passwords I want to keep on my hand, I keep them on my hand. Okay. On my so the the cloud is now running directly on the phones. No more data center. The question is whether you automatically participate in the cloud if you install SlapOS. So by default, no. Uh, when you set up uh, some nodes, this is for you and only for you. And then you can set a list of people who can uh, deploy things into this, or you can set it public to be paid for this. More questions? Whether we do some virtualization? So no, we are bare metal. So we can uh, request, we, we can deploy virtual machines, but this is software agnostic, agnostic in fact. So you can deploy pretty much anything you want. You could you could request uh, you could request a KVM and put your things inside there. But the, the general idea is that you run by by default you run on the web. Okay. So I recommend everybody to have a look at zero VM. Who knows zero VM? It, nobody knows zero VM. No. It's an Israeli software which uh, is like a virtualization wrapper, which only has 200 kilobytes of uh, memory overhead. So each time you launch a Unix process, it's wrapped into kind of virtualization container. And you can start and stop immediately the process with the same kind of security containment as a virtual machine. So I think it's used for military applications. Nobody really knows zero VM. Secret. Sorry. Yeah. So if we would rather go in the direction of zero VM 
to do more security containment. Thank you.